everyone. Welcome to my channel Q10X. I hope you're all doing great. In this video, today we are going to discuss keyword planning. It is one of the foremost things when we want to get started with our SEO strategy. I'll be sharing with you all the pointers that we should know when we are working on keyword planning. But before we get started, I request all of you who are new to my channel to please hit the subscribe button and do press the bell icon so that you do not miss any update. And now, without any further conversation, let's jump right in. Step 1: Audience Insights. The first and the foremost step before even starting an SEO strategy is to deep dive into your own topic. This will help you understand how to work things out differently. Try to understand your audience by discussion on online discussion forums, social media channels, etc. Try to think of ways of how you would like your customer to think about your brand. This is a very important and crucial step as it's going to give you important tips and pointers. Often time marketers miss on this. Step 2 identify topic buckets and think of topic ideas think of topic buckets that are crucial and relevant for your business these buckets will help you in deciding for the keywords an ideal way to do it is think like your customer think of probable topic types your audience will search and the result for which is your business let me share an example with you let's assume that you are into digital marketing then your probable bucket types would be what is digital marketing how can you do it? What are the tools used for digital marketing? What is SEO? Etc. Step 3. Deciding on focus keywords. The next step is to think for keywords that would fall under the topics you created. These keywords or phrases are what you think that your audience is looking for and are important to rank in the SERP, that is search engine result page. I'll share an example with you. So here we are focusing on keywords with volume. So our searches could be digital marketing, digital agency, SEO services, digital marketing agency, etc. Step 4. Keyword research tools. This step is very important as it will help you to further refine your search so that you can shortlist a set of keywords that are most relevant for your business. For this, you can take the help of any of the tools. Uh, there are tools like Google Keyword Planner, SEMrush, Ubersuggest, Moz Keyword Planner, etc. Step 5. Understanding the search intent. Oh yes, Google's algorithm works towards identifying why is someone searching for something? What is the reason behind the search? Is someone looking to buy something? Etc. This step is very important as it will help you identify those high volume keywords for your brand that will match your potential audience's search intent. Step 6. Long tail keywords. These are more descriptive keywords that are related to your brand's topic. So an example for long tail keywords could be let's assume that I am into the business of wallets. So a long tail keyword for my brand uh, could be uh, black men's wallet with a coin section. Research says that people looking for long tail keywords have a greater likelihood to make the purchase. Having said that, long tail keywords are not for you if you're looking for immediate results. It's not going to help, but it will definitely help your page in the long run. Just a heads up, the short keywords or the seed keywords as we call them are very highly competitive. Step 7. Competition. You cannot, should not avoid competition. Keyword research alone for your brand is not enough. Competition research will give you an idea about the industry as a whole and you might be able to find the right set of keywords for your brand. With this study, you might also get to know about those terms for which it is difficult to rank for. Step 8. The right set of keywords for your website. With the above steps in place, we now have a shortlisted mix of keywords that are relevant for your business. This is a mix of both long tail keywords and seed keywords. Now is the time to determine which of these keywords are actually helpful and will reap the results that we want to achieve. Now here comes in two important factors. One, 
is keyword difficulty and second is the authority of domain ranking in the first page of Google. Keyword difficulty is shown as a percentage. In simple terms, it means how difficult it would be to rank well in Google organic search for that particular keyword. It is an estimate. The higher the percentage, the more the difficulty for that keyword to rank high. Now, what is authority of domains ranking? In simple terms, it means which are the websites that are displayed in the top 10 positions upon doing a Google search. The SERP usually shows big businesses for our chosen keyword. Now, this is the time that we have to decide whether we need to go forward with these keywords or should we opt for long tail keywords. Step 9. Page titles. Again, an important step. This step will actually determine if your website will be shown in the Google results. The best way is to keep your page focused on a specific keyword. Your page title should include your target keyword and it should be unique. And you're done. The last step in this process is to keep looking. This means that we need to keep a check on the new trending keywords. These keywords might not have high search volumes, but it may still perform. As per an analysis shared, 30% of all the queries searched on Google on a monthly basis are new keywords. With this, we come to the end of the video. I hope you liked it and found it useful. If yes, please do hit the like button and do subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Bye-bye. Take care.